So in this episode, everyone is celebrating because they defeated the zombies. Everyone is drunk and maybe that's what we are to blame the bad dialogue on. Folks are trying to hook up with other folks. Jamie and Tormund are trying to hook up with Brienne. Jamie gets jealous about it and asks Brienne if Tormund has grown on her. Some rando is trying to hook up with the Hound and Gendry proposed to Arya even though they only did it once and he didn't even know that she was interested in him before that. It all seemed very junior high school and these goofy scenes came came right after Jon Snow's speech about remembering the sacrifices of the folks who died in the battle. I know some folks thought this speech was kind of weak, but I liked it. Also, they should build huge statues of Jorah and Lyanna Mormont on Bear Island when things get settled a bit. Daenerys gets really insecure about all the love Jon is getting, and that problem is exacerbated by the fact that Jon insists on telling Arya and Sansa about the fact that he's a Targaryen. He swears them to secrecy, and I trust Arya to keep that to herself, but of course Sansa was never to be trusted. She tells Tyrion the first chance she gets. I suppose it's consistent with her character to not be trustworthy with that kind of thing, but I think it would have been cooler if Tyrion had figured it out on his own. Or maybe he and Varys could work it out together. Given the way Sansa reacted when Tyrion brought up the fact that Jon is not a Stark, and given the fact that Tyrion spent so much time talking to Bran, there's enough setup there to make it entirely plausible for Tyrion to figure it out. Was the conversation Tyrion had with Bran going to be a setup for anything, or is it going to be entirely inconsequential? It seems as though the battle didn't kill off as many folks as it looked like it did. Only half the Northmen are gone, and half the Unsullied. Varus says that the balance is even, which seems like it's not that bad. Also, the Dornish have turned against Cersei, and she's losing more allies all the time, so it seems like they just have to wait a while for her to be virtually powerless, especially since winter is coming and war has probably depleted the supply of food. But Daenerys says that as long as Cersei sits on the throne, she can call herself Queen of the Seven Kingdoms, and that's why Daenerys wants to attack the capital and attack it as soon as possible. That seems like an awfully flimsy reason to put the lives of the people of King's Landing at so much risk. Given that this is the case, Arya, Sansa, Tyrion, and Varys are pretty well justified in opposing her desire to attack. Doing so would be of little more than merely symbolic consequence. Sansa says that the soldiers need to rest, and Daenerys gets mad that she wants to postpone when the longer I leave my enemies alone, the stronger they become. Which contradicts what both Tyrion and Varys just told her. Winter is coming, and Cersei's subjects are turning against her. She's getting weaker, not stronger. Bronn finally showed up to tell Tyrion that he owes him money, so Tyrion offers him Highgarden. Of course, whether he takes that offer depends on who he thinks will win. He's betting on Daenerys winning, so he lets Tyrion and Jaime live for the moment. The Hound starts riding south, and Arya goes along with him. He's probably going down there to kill the mountain, and Arya probably wants to kill both the mountain and Cersei. That might be pretty easy if Arya can take people's faces. It would be really easy to sneak up on them both. I hope she takes Kyburn's face. I expect that she'll try to kill the mountain, and the mountain will stop her, and then the hound will have to step in and save her. Or maybe the hound will start the fight with the mountain, and she'll step in to save him to make up for the time she left him for dead. I doubt Arya will end up killing Cersei, because it might be a bit much for her to kill both the knight King and Cersei. Also, Jamie is heading south, and since he's the Kingslayer, he could also be the Queenslayer, and it would be consistent with the prophecy of the Valonqar. The witch who told Cersei that her children would die also said that her little brother would end up murdering her, and Cersei thinks that this is Tyrion, but I think it's going to be Jamie. Jamie seemed to want Brienne to believe that he was going south to ally himself with Cersei, but maybe he just said that so she would be less upset if he died. He seemed to decide to go after he found out that another of Daenerys' dragons had died, so maybe he started to worry that the tides were turning against Daenerys and that Daenerys needed his help. It kind of surprises me that nobody has thought to try to put armor on the dragons given that they know Cersei has ballistas. When Tyrion tells Varys about Jon being a Targaryen and when Daenerys makes it clear that she doesn't care about all of the civilians she will kill, Varys effectively tells Tyrion that he will kill Daenerys. Tyrion, however, has his buddy Bronn who's good at killing people and will get Highgarden if Daenerys wins, so all Tyrion has to do is let Bronn know that Varys and Tends to throw a wrench into that plan, and Bronn will probably kill Varus on Tyrion's behalf. Varus, however, at least used to be smart enough to not show his hand like that, so maybe he's trying to manipulate Tyrion somehow by telling him this. 
I love that moment when Tyrion is trying to parlay with Kyburn and he gets frustrated and walks right past him to address Cersei directly. He tries to appeal to her concern for her child, but that doesn't stop her from beheading Masande, so I still think that she's not really pregnant. Now that Masande is dead, both Daenerys and Grey Worm are not going to give a shit about civilians. Hopefully Jaime can kill Cersei before Daenerys attacks, so she doesn't need to. That probably won't happen though because of that vision that Daenerys had several years ago about the throne room being burned down. 